Chris Mitchell here with uh, Plaid.Music. I'm actually going to give you a little tutorial of how to do a uh, 3D revolve. I'm going to revolve this uh, mug and create it 3D so that I can apply a graphic to it to give it a lot more realistic effect. Um, we're going to start by going and taking the pen tool and I'm going to go ahead and draw into the beginning of the, excuse me, the center of the object. And I'm going to go ahead and make these as perpendicular as I can. This is really for demonstration purposes, and so I'm not going to worry about getting it absolutely perfect, but it'll it'll serve us really well in this tutorial. I'm going to follow down the side of that. Then I'm going to go ahead and get perpendicular with the center again, and all the way up to the top and close that out. Now I'm not going to worry about the top uh, round portions of this because the uh, revolve 3D effect will take care of that. All right, so I've got to click my object. I'm going to go to Effect. And under 3D and Materials, I'm actually not going to use the new Revolve. I'm actually going to use the Classic. I'll be honest with you, these tools right here are not intuitive. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Classic and uh, just make that work. So we're going to Revolve that. And if I choose the left edge, it's just going to make a perfect uh, cylinder. And we don't want that. We want it to follow the contour that I, that I chose, that I created, my geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and choose right edge. And as you see, we get a pretty good representation of the mug for all intents and purposes. Um, now, normally when you go to map art, uh, you go to map your art on the, uh, on the mug. And I'm going to show you how that works. I'm going to map my art. I've got a lot of different graphics that I've created. And this last one here, I believe, was a, uh, was a wrap like this. And you'll notice that when I do this, there's actually warping in my logo. So we're going to talk about how to actually avoid that. Uh, if you notice on graphic eight, I did it and I got that nice metallic look and there was no warping in the logo. This is nice and clean like it's supposed to be. That's because I created this as a transparent PNG file, a ping, if you will. I created that. So uh, when I realized that the um, external lines and the vectors were basically creating warps for the 3D geometry to work, I said, well, I'll go ahead and trick Illustrator and I'll just make a, uh, uh, a ping file so it treated the entire thing as an outline and it wouldn't warp the inside geometry. It was just a way to work around that I found in Illustrator that kind of worked really well. So when I did that, um, I uh, was able to come through and drag all of this and uh, get it exactly like I want. But I'll take you guys through that, that step in just a second. Let's take a look at that really quick, see what that looks like. I kind of want to drag it to the edge. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll do invisible geometry so that you don't actually see the, uh, the 3D uh, mug that I created. You only see the photo. And we'll do that and click OK. And there you have it. Click off of it and now it looks like it's uh, been lasered on the side. The geometry is a little off right there, but Illustrator, it does a pretty good job, but it's not exactly perfect. So it looks, like, it looks like I laser engraved that a little crooked, but as you can see, it's got the texture for the, uh, the background that I created. Now, if you want to keep down that rabbit hole, let me show you how to create the materials appropriately for what we're talking about. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one. Uh, let me go ahead and do undo so I've got that, that, that uh, extrusion ready. So what I want to do is I want to now, I want to create this texture for uh, my mug, and I've got this uh, this wonderful brushed aluminum. I'm going to create this texture. And let's say I go to make clipping mask, which is what we normally do if that's in the front. It says yes. Okay, great. But we got a problem. As you can see, it didn't create a clipping mask. That's because this object right here has uh, got a lot of components in it. So what we've got to do before we make a, a clipping mask with a lot of components, we've got to actually create a uh, compound path. So I'm going to go up to my object menu, create compound path, and make. And now I'm going to bring that back to the front. And let's see, I want to make the clipping mask. Voila, there you have it. So now I've got my clipping mask as a compound path. Again, like I told you before, if I still did that as an overlay, it would warp these edges because it's still treating that as a vector outline mask. So what I want to do now is I want to export that object. I'm going to export that as a ping. We're just going to do alu dot whatever. That's good enough. Not JPEG. We'll do a ping. Oops. We'll do a ping there. And let's see. Yeah, we'll do the polar camel. Let's do that. Let's do the polar camel. All right. And now what I'm going to do, 
under my materials. This is where you actually create your materials to apply. I'm going to go back up to Effect, 3D and Materials, and now I am going to use the Modern Materials database. And you can see that graphic I created earlier that didn't work out. I'm going to go ahead and add uh, a new one. And actually, I've got to import that into this file first. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Place. Where's my place? I'm losing it. Oh, there I am. It's early in the morning. Sorry about that. I'm going to do alu dot. Uh, I think I did alu dot two. Is that what I did? I did one of the other. I can't remember. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do that one. I think that's what I did. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to place that in there. There we go. There's my aluminum dot. And it's a ping now. It's not a vector. It's not. You can see that it's not outlined like that. It's one ping image. So now I'm going to go to materials. I'm going to go ahead and uh, 3D materials. And let's go ahead and add that. I'm going to click on it. And then I'm just going to click plus add and you want to add it as a single graphic okay so now it's there as graphic 10 so now I'm gonna go back up to my revolve go back up to my 3d materials I'm gonna go ahead and say revolve oops 3d classic revolve sorry about that I'm gonna go right edge so that it does the actual contour and now I'm gonna map my art and I'm going to go back up to here, and I'm going to go to my graphic 10. And now, as you see, if I drag that in there, there's no warping of that logo. It's actually correct. I'm going to go ahead and click Invisible Geometry. Click OK. Click OK. And there you go. There's my mug. And, it, and you can see that if I zoom in, it's got that nice texture as it would have if I laser engraved that. And it does give it that, that nice little bit of geometry. Now, one thing that I was going to say, the reason why I did this is because the photo that I took of this mug, it just didn't show up that. I kept getting a black line. The way to fix that in photography is actually put a white sheet in front of your camera. Then when you show it reflects uh, the chrome, the, the chrome look or the brushed aluminum look. I just didn't uh, do it that day. And I thought, you know what, I'll just go ahead and do a, a quick snap. And uh, since it's just a demonstration purposes, might as well do that. Anyway, I hope this helps you guys out and uh, have a good day.